Hello everybody. Today we're going to have a go at painting a tulip. This wasn't going to be my next art lesson, but this morning in the garden, I noticed this beautiful tulip. By tomorrow, it would be completely open and would be too difficult for lots of people to draw. So I'm going to have a go today at doing this tulip, which is quite beautiful, isn't it? The colours and the shapes. I quickly w went out with a pencil and a piece of paper and drew two of the tulips that were together in the garden. And that's just a very quick sketch. And sometimes it's good to do that because you get to see where they're looking uh, at their best, really, uh, in a group, maybe. This is a picture that I did of some tulips. That's done in pastel and it's very nice in pastel to work uh, with different shades and blend them together. It's not always as easy with felt tip pens or coloured pencils, but I will try and show you how you can do it. Um, but that was a group of tulips with a background, so you might want to do that later on. So the basic shape of a tulip is that. And it comes back into the stem here. It's like a cup shape which feeds back into the stem and then some of the petals will start to open. For some of the younger ones, it's easier to do a closed tulip. So you might like to think of that parents if you're helping them. For the older children, I'm going to put in some leaves. The problem is that the leaf of a tulip comes out behind the stem. And if we were to do a picture, with that stem and then the leaf. Our picture would be a picture of a stem, too much stem. So I've used the shape of the leaf here. I can show you it's against the white. I've used the shape of the leaf uh, and tried to put it into the picture to finish what we would call a composition. Things that you're going to need today. You may not be able to find a tulip in your garden. It's very haphazard really. When they're out, when they're full, they soon flop. Um, I brought in some leaves, but again, some of the leaves are very big and in a way would spoil the painting uh, if you were to put them that big next to the tulip. You're going to need a plate to draw around so that when you take your white paper here, your white paper here, you want to put your plate on. You're going to draw around it and you want the same distance at the top and the bottom and make sure that it fits in to the sides. So you want the same amount of space top and bottom and try and find a plate in the cupboard that fits in to your uh, piece of cartridge paper or computer paper or watercolour paper if you can. Again, the paper is the difficulty with some people. So you want white cartridge paper, computer paper, or very best, uh, watercolour paper. I've chosen this artist to look at today in particular, and that's an artist called Georgia O'Keeffe. And she is very famous for painting huge paintings of flowers. I mean, huge to fill a wall. Uh, and that's one of her studies of poppies. And she was painting in the 1950s and 60s. The other equipment that you'll need today. You'll need coloured pencils. 
maybe I've tried to pick out some colours that I think are very like the tulip here. I picked out uh, some felt tip pens again in those colours if you can. We can talk about the greens later. You need, if you're going to paint, you need two water jars. One for washing your brush, one for dampening your paper. I often use a paper plate to mix my colours on and then at the end you can just discard it. You might have a paper plate, I don't know, but talking about paper plates, for the next art lesson you're going to need a paper plate. If you haven't got one, you can always draw around a plate and use that shape. But if you have a paper plate, that is very nice. It may be that some of your neighbours, if you give them a ring, they might have a few paper plates that you could use and they might leave them at your gate for you. So it's worth asking. I've got my watercolours and I've got a brush. And that's basically all you need for today. Here we go. Before I start, I want to say how beautiful Evie, uh, you did the daffodil. I was really pleased with that. Annabelle had a go and she was only two and that was wonderful. Carmel, a very sophisticated daffodil, but she is a more mature, mature lady, I would say. Owen from Isaac's class and Cordelia, who's GCSE year now. The letters, Sophie and Freya, they were exceptionally good and I loved seeing them. OK, we're going to start on our um, tulip now. It's a little bit difficult now because the minute I've picked the tulip, it starts to open more and more and the shape of it changes. So it's almost impossible to get it the same as when I drew it earlier. So you'll just have to go with that uh, and realise that it, it will have changed from the drawing that I did. This morning I drew a circle first like this. Again, leaving the same distance, top and bottom, and trying to find a plate that I could fit on so that it wasn't chopped off on the sides. And I went out and did a quick sketch uh, of the tulips in the garden. So that's the first thing that I did. And I've drawn it very heavily so that you could see it. When you come to draw your tulip, I want you to draw it very lightly because otherwise you get a big dark line around everything and you don't really want that with the flower. Keep your drawing as light as you can. I'm having to draw it heavier so that you can see. Little ones, you need to keep it very simple for little ones because some of the shapes are a bit difficult. So again, put your, oops, Put your plate on, draw around it and then just do very, very simple shapes for the little ones. Look, very simple. They can do this like a cup shape. They just need to draw a cup shape and a cup shape here. So it comes back into this cup at the bottom and they can make it as simple as they like. So that's basically what we've done there. You can add some leaves. I'm going over these so that you can see them. And I said before we just sort of 
in a way making up these leaves because if we did the very very big uh, tulip leaves they would look a bit ugly and we're just trying to build a composition this time not just like we did a daffodil this time we're trying to produce a composition within a circle so we do this one this way so that it's going like this okay so that's the drawing for the little ones This is one that I started thinking about how you were going to do it if you only had pencil crayons and only had felt tip pens. And you can get quite a nice result. So again, I put my plate on, drew around it, and then worked the composition of it within that circle. So you want a tulip here, it's very slightly to the left I would say, but a nice size of flower head. <clears throat> then I've put one to the right further down. So again, a nice size shape, the stems and the leaves. And I'll show you how to colour that with the pencils in a minute, but I'll show you how to look and draw first of all because I'm going to do it with watercolour paper because that shows you how you can blend it. I've had to put very light, um, a very light drawing on because of the time factor doing a video so I can't take up. It might take me three or four hours to do a painting of a tulip but obviously you couldn't watch that and I couldn't record it. So there's the circle. <clears throat> now when you're looking all the time you should be looking and drawing. So your eye goes up to what you're doing and then down to your paper. Now mine was much more closed before it sort of died a bit. Um, so I'm just going to have to do it as I saw it this morning. So I'm trying to look at what I'm doing, putting these petals in. I could see a bit of a petal there. They have to come back to the cup shape at the bottom. So no matter how many petals you have, they have to come back to there. You may have found a tulip in the garden. <clears throat> Not everybody will have one. You can look on the internet. You can look in magazines or books, but, <coughs> sorry. If you can't find a picture, then you can just pause the video and try and go off mine. That's your best bet. Then I've got the stem. Take it right down to the bottom this time because we're going to the bottom of the circle. The next flower that I tried further down here, I tried to, to do it so that you could see a slight bit of the inside. But again, difficult because the minute you cut a tulip, it, it tends to open and, and change shape. But I'll show you basically what I did here. But again, we're having to come back into that cup shape. So this is what I tried to draw this morning, okay? So we've got a tulip shape, but we can sort of see, we're gonna see a little bit of the inside. So we maybe see a few of these stamens here. 
and then we come back to the stem and we take the stem off the page right up to the edge of the circle. Now the leaves, as I've explained, because we're doing a composition, we want it to flow. So we want it to go within the circular shape. So I'm going to do a leaf here. And I'm filling in some of the space that's left here. Okay, so we've basically got the drawing and you'll have got the idea of what we're going to do. Um, and I explained before that the leaf actually grows out of the stem behind the tulip, not depending which way you have it. But um, it, if we did that, it would get very complicated for you. So we've just kept that simple there. We'll lay that down because we're going to think about colour now. So this is the one I tried to start for you with coloured pencils, first of all. And I'm going to just do a petal and show you what I did. When I looked at it, it had, again, it had paler tones to the top. It has... Um, it was more like that this beautiful rich pinky red shade here and it has some purpley shades on and even some orangey colors there can you see that but as it goes to the top it gets lighter and it's got a bit of light here either side and you can see some sort of lines on it which actually it lends itself to pencil work so some of you um, will be able to get a very nice result just with your pencil crayons. The thing with pencil crayons, you've got to go in the same direction. So you've got to go in the same direction and you've got to vary how heavily you put on the pencil. So if you want a brighter shade, you go over it several times. Again, all in the same direction. Unfortunately, the dark pencil is smudging a bit, but I, I did that purposely so you could see. Where I want it to go lighter, I put less pressure on the pencil. So I don't press as hard and I can get this nice pale pink if I want it at the top. If I want some redder tones, then start to put those on and as it comes down to here then um, we have some purpley tones near the bottom now we want to try and get it a bit brighter than color than that so I'll go over that I actually take my pencil off each time. I'm not going up and down, up and down. I'm putting my pencil on and taking it off each time and putting it on. So I'm going like this. I'm not going scribble. I'm going separate lines like that. And then you need to blend that slightly up there. If I want some orangey tones, which I said sometimes you have these orangey tones coming in, especially down the middle. You can put some orangey tones and you can see how if you work at that, you can build up some beautiful colours on the tulip there. I put all the colours that I thought I would need together. And again, that makes it easier. When I came to do the felt tip pens, they're slightly more difficult um, to blend, but not impossible. 
So supposing I, I try and do this one. That's a bit bright. So, yeah, that's better. So again, try and keep your lines all coming down separately. You're not scribbling up and down. Perhaps I need to go back and finish that edge. But again, you're trying to come down like this so that you get the lines looking like the lines on the tulip. And then I might change my colour. Ooh, let's see what this is like. Yep, that's all right. And then we might put a more purpley turn near the bottom there. This is more difficult. A bit more difficult with the felt it pen, but whilst it's still wet, get your paler tone and try and blend it a little bit. And I am pressing hard and scribbling a bit on that while it's wet, trying to get it to blend a tiny bit. So you can see, you can work with a felt tip pen. It isn't quite as successful as with the pencil crayons this time, actually. The pencil crayons are easier to blend and they lend themselves uh, to that colour range. So I'll put those there and then I'm going to show you how to do the painting. So I've got to move all this lot out of the way and bring my set of watercolours into play. So I'm hoping you can see them. I know it's very difficult for me here to get the camera right so that you can see what I'm doing, but I'm doing my best. Okay, so we've got the tulip here and I've got my two sets of water one to dampen the petals, one to wash my brush. So I think I'll wash my brush in that and I'll dampen the petals in this one. Okay. And I've got a tissue to dry my brush and I'll put a paper plate here so I can mix the colours. I said before, when you're doing watercolours, I always think it's best just to dampen them slightly so that by the time you come to use them, they're just a bit easier. I've got some paint on that, haven't I? Okay. Right. The other thing I need to say is that when you're doing a watercolour, no matter what watercolour you're doing, you don't use white. So you'll see in my uh, paints here, there isn't a white. You only actually need white if you've made a mistake. So the essence of a watercolour is that it looks watery. <laughs> that seems a bit self-evident, but that is so. Um, you don't use white, you add water. So to make a paler shade, you add water, not white. The minute you add white, which is like a chalky pigment, you can't see through it and therefore you've lost the lovely look of a watercolour. Right, so I'm going to, first of all, mix some colours because I need them ready. When I wet the petal, I need the colours ready to put on before the petal dries. So I'm looking here and seeing which colours I need. I'm going to try and turn it so I get that very, very bright, beautiful colour in here. Um, and I'm going to try and mix that there. So I'm going to put a few splodges of water here. Maybe three or four. Doesn't matter if they all go together even. And then I'm going to try and mix the pink. Now the pink, 
we have to try and work out which kind of pink we want. It isn't um, an orangey red, is it? It has parts of it which are, are more uh, of a corally colour, but some of it is sort of a purpley pink. So we need a few different shades here. Let's see what we've got. And remember that... Let me see. It doesn't matter that I'd work outside of here to see the colours because we'll cut it out at the end. That's not bad. That is a range of colour. I'm going to try a bit of this one. Ooh, that's very bright, but it might do for in there. And I might add a tiny bit of that pink as well, to, just to turn it down a tiny bit. Let me see what colour that brings us to. Yeah, that's quite a nice colour. Um, we need a little bit of orangey pink. Not too orange, so we'll, we'll add a bit of that pink again. Is that orangey enough? No. Nope. We need more orange. And probably more water, because we want it paler. Let's see what that's like. Mm, bit more orange. So you have to learn to do this so that you get the right colours. That's probably okay. And then we're going to try for more of a pinky purple here. So we need, what colour is that? Hmm. Put a bit of that in, I think. I don't think I have a purple there, so I'll add a little bit of blue. Not much. Blue is ever such a strong colour. It changes everything very quickly. There, that's fine. So I've added some blue. I think we need it a bit stronger. I'll add a bit of that other red. And I'm adding a bit of blue, a tiny bit of blue, not a lot of blue. Let's see what that's like. Yeah, just a bit deeper. Okay. Wash your brush, dry it. I'm going to do one petal at a time. So I'm going to dampen, not soak, dampen the petal, one petal at a time. And this time we need the colours to run if we can. So we've got to work quickly now. So having a look at that, it's paler at the top and we want to leave some light areas. So I'm going to put a bit of this pink on near the edge. The more it blends and runs, then the better our effect will be. So those of you who have got new watercolour paints and, and want to have a try, this is the thing to do. To try an experiment and try and get them to run. If I want to take some paint off, I scrape my brush like that and I suck the paint off with the brush. So if I don't want as much of the orange on, for example, I would just suck it off with the brush that I've tried. And then we kind of want to blend across as we did. A little bit paler at the top. Then we look at it and we think, oh, we want a bit brighter, I think, here. So whilst it's still wet, we can run some colours on. 
if you get a blob like that, let's say, show you again, dry brush, flatten it, and then it's as if you suck that paint off a little bit. If you want little light bits again, you can get them whilst it's wet. Now I think we want a bit more darker purple, so I'm going to try and mix a bit here. So I'm mixing blue and red, a different red, a darker red. And then at the very bottom where it's joining on, I'm going to get that nice dark. Okay, I'm going to stop the video now while you have go at the petals. Maybe I should do one more, should I? Okay, I'll do one more. I'll do one more on here and then you'll have got the hang of it. So clean brush, scrape your water off, and dampen your petal. So you're painting up to a pencil line with your petal. Then you're going to start and add some colours. So we've mixed some of the colours and we're putting them on. Can you see how you won't get this effect on, on um, computer paper, paper, but watercolour paper has this beautiful quality of running and, and um, blending with all sorts with the other colours and then this nice dark purple at the bottom wash my brush Take some of it off so that you get that lightness. If you're working on computer paper, you need to leave light areas. So if you're trying to work on computer paper, instead of like with the watercolour that you, you, you're sucking off light areas, you have to leave light areas and blend them across. I'll do one more. And, and not dampen it as much as if it's the water, um, as if it's the computer paper where, where you've got to leave it light. But I did want you to have an experiment. Those people who have got watercolours, they are lovely to work with. And you're trying all the time to let them run and blend. I should have finished that. Okay. So, this time, if you're using computer paper, just go around the edge. Leave the middle. Leave the middle. You need to put a bit of that colour along the middle there, but try and leave these bits here unpainted. I don't know if you can, how well you can see the colours that I'm mixing, but I'm, I'm mixing blue and that red, it's a dark red, a bit more blue. And then at the bottom here, you could put a bit of the purple. Right, in a way, I don't need, because it's watercolour paper, it's all flowing out. If you've got just computer paper or cartridge paper, you'll need to... Just get your brush fairly dry and blend across. So if you've got computer paper, that's really what you need to do. 
because you do need some lightness on it. In fact, that's gone a bit heavy. Sometimes you can just wet it again and take it off. Yeah, do you see what I did? I just wet it. Dried my brush through my fingers and took a bit off. So you can do play about with it, see what kind of effect you get. I'll stop now, try and do a bit more and come back. Right, so I've painted my flowers here. I might want to put in the tiny bits of stamens here. And so I'd pick up, not black, but a darkish purpley shade. And I might just tip those in. That would kind of finish it. So there are the tulip heads finished. I know some of you will be very nervous about having a go at this blending and everything. So I'm just going to go over that with you very quickly. You can have a practice first. So if you've got watercolour paper, you can just draw some, any kind of shapes really to have a go at. Practice. Dampening the square. Whoops. Remembering that the... See, you should have dampened it with nice clean water. It's gone a bit pink there. It doesn't matter because you can see it better probably. Dampen it. Then what you mustn't worry about with watercolour and the best, the best techniques are where they all run together. So I'm mixing a bit more paint here, some red and some orangey red. And a bit of purple maybe, a bit of blue, that darker red. And while it's damp, run your colour on and you see how it goes blodgy. They're the nicest effects with watercolour. So while it's wet, practice running your colours on. Leave them a few minutes, see, see what happens. And you'll find that the watercolour will just run to different places. You can dry your brush off. I'm terrible, I'll have it all over the carpet, but you dry it off between your fingers and you can take it to an edge or bring the colour up. So the thing with this technique is not to worry about it because you can keep having a go at it. Dry your brush, I dry it through my fingers. You can take some off. You can always take a bit of colour off. Can you see how I did that? So it's just experimenting really and seeing what you come up with. But you do get that beautiful kind of runny effect, but only by not worrying. Dampen your paper, run the colour on, see what happens and there you go. It doesn't work as well on cartridge paper, but it... it it should work. Draw some shapes and circles and have a practice. Dampen your paper. Take your colour. It does run. It does run, but not quite as well. But needs must. You will be able to see how it how it, it still runs. Can you see that? And that's how you get those beautiful effects. I want it darker at the bottom there. 
and then again you can you can blend you can take off so that's that's cartridge paper so you can still have a go if you have any kind of paper computer paper is a bit thin but again have a go um, and the pencil crayon ones will work well we need to get on now and paint the stems now the stems if we look the stem is sort of a bit khaki green i would say um, a bit different to what it is further down and we've got that lime green bit there so those of you who are really looking in detail will um, be able to see that change i'm going to get a clean plate for the greens i should really change my water but i'm not going to again if you want a paler color in watercolour you don't add white you never use white you add water and that's what makes a watercolour now you can um, mix a few shades get some water on I'll leave it pink it doesn't matter um, we want a paler shade for further down more yellowy shade and we want a brownier shade so I'm going to add a bit of this sort of yellow ochre down here like a bit, bit darker it's not exactly brown it's in between a brown and a, a greeny shade we want a bit more so it's just experimenting Trying to get a colour that you think, oh yeah, I think that's that's not bad. There. So I've got three colours. Now all I need to do with the stems, get pick up clean water. And we've done this before with the daffodils. Rest your hand on the paper and come down. Rest your hand. You can only do something detail if your hand is resting very difficult if you've got holding a brush up here and you're trying to do it you'll never do it hold it on the silver part hold it tight rest your hand so then we'll take some of that darker green and we'll try and keep one side light again you know how we did so we're coming down and then I want to pick up a little bit of the, the different green as I come down. Dampen your brush off and just bring it across a little bit lighter on that side. Now if you want it darker still, go to that dark green and while it's wet you can add little bits. Come down and it'll all sort of blend and you see as it blends it looks more realistic doesn't it I'm going to do a leaf here so dampen your leaf now the leaves are that sort of bit darker green aren't they so we need to get a bit more green in that darker one. Try and leave the centre unpainted. Try and leave that unpainted. Come down both sides, holding your brush, brush steady. Hold it steady, resting your hand. You see, I'm resting this part of my, or the heel of my hand here right take your brush dry it off and come down that middle now because um, while it's wet turn your brush upside down and if you look it's got sort of lines going that way you 
can put um, my God, just looking for a very fine end to the brush there. That's it. One very fine bit. I'll do one more leaf. Dampen your leaf. green go to the outside the water that you paint on when you come to put paint on the paint will only run to where the water is so that's why you've got to paint up to the pencil edge dry your brush again and blend it so you get a few different tones get the thin end of a small brush some lines on. Okay. I'll turn that off. Right, that's the stems and leaves finished. And then we're just going to cut out the circle. So wait till it's dry. You might not have um, some black paper to put it on but you might have some coloured paper at home you can have a look see what you've got it's quite good to let the little ones cut their own circle out it's practice with scissors the finished thing. I should have mentioned that when you're painting the petals, do a petal, leave the one next to it till that's dried. Do this one, then leave that and do that one and then they won't all blend in together. But you can see the nice effects you can get. Hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget you need a paper plate for the next lesson if you can get one, otherwise we'll just draw a circle like that. Bye for now.